Canto 9, chapter 19, Kinyati achieves liberation. <clears throat> so I'll read 21, 22, don't have any purport, 23, and we'll do 24 today. 21, Shukadev Goswami said, after speaking this way to his wife, King Nemiyani, his wife Devayani, King Yati was now free from all material desires, called his youngest son Puru, and returned Puru's youth, exchanged for his own old age. Text 22. King Yati gave the southeast to his son Juya, Juyu, to the south to his son Yadu, to the west to his son Turvasu, Vasu, and the north to his son Anu. This way he divided the kingdom. Text 23. Yayati enthroned his youngest son Puru as the emperor of the entire world and the proprietor of all its riches. He placed all the other sons who were older than Puru, under Puru's control. So today we're reading text number 24. Ashishvitam varsa pungam Salmargam shishu saha Sinena Muchi Muchi Munidam Sinena Muchi Munidam Ita Baksha Viva Divija Ita Baksha Viva Divija Ita Baksha Viva Divija Ita Baksha Viva Divija Pungam Sarvargam Isriyeshu Saha Sarvargam Isriyeshu Saha Nidam Yata Paksa Viva Vijamaha Word for word. <coughs> Devi Tam being always engaged in. Varsha Ugam for many, many years. Svagam the six senses, including the mind. Isheshu in sense enjoyment. Saha Pingyati Sainena in a moment Mumu gave up 
Nidam Nes Seta Brakas Paksa One that has grown its wings Eva Like Nidaha A bird <coughs> Translation purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shil Prabhupada. Having enjoyed sense gratification for many, many years, O King Prishi, Hidati was accustomed to it, but he gave it up entirely in a moment. Just as a bird flies away from the nest as soon as its wings have grown. Well, this is a very wonderful purport by Srila Prabhupada. I'll try to cover everything in the time we have. Purport that King Yati was immediately liberated from the bondage of conditioned life is certainly astonishing. But the example given herein is appropriate. A tiny bird depends fully on its father and mother even to eat. Suddenly, flies away from the nest when its wings have grown. Similarly, if one fully surrenders to the Supreme Personality Godhead, one's immediately liberated from the bondage of conditioned life as promised by the Lord, Om Tvam Sarapad Medyo Mokshishami. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 2.14.18 Udkiranta Udara Belinda Pulaksha Adira Samba Yavana Sada Yaha Yahanye Cha Papa Yad Apashre Shaha Sudyati Tazmai of a Vishave Namaha. This is the prayer that these Kutas, Kuratas, Hunsas, Andiras, Ulanda, Pulaka, Andira, Subara, Yavana, and the Kasha races and even others addicted to sinful acts can be purified by taking shelter of the devotees of the Lord. For he is the supreme power, I beg to offer my respectful obeisances unto him. Lord Vishnu is so powerful, he can deliver anyone at once if he is pleased to do so. And Lord Vishnu, the Supreme Personality God at Krishna, can be pleased immediately if we accept his order by surrendering unto him as Krishna, and therefore as soon as he wants wants to, to want to be renounced, as soon as he wants he wanted to be renounced in true life, Lord Vasudev helped him. He must therefore be we must therefore be sincere and surrendering ourselves into the Lord's feet of the Lord, then we can immediately <coughs> be liberated from all bondage and conditioned life. It's clearly expressed in this verse. Nanti Sampadantikam. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Runitsananda Sri Adrita Gurara Sri Vasari Gaur Bhaktivinoda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 So this verse <coughs> we're going to speak <coughs> speak about detachment full surrender the Qualification to fully surrender, how to be the sincere, <coughs> and also this word. There's one word, 
one word in this verse that Prabhupada repeats four times. Anybody know what that is? One word Prabhupada repeated four times. That's immediately. That's significant. Srila Prabhupada was very careful how he purported the Bhagavad the Srimad Bhagavatam. <coughs> now in the attachment, here we see the King Yati became detached. It says immediately. And throughout the Bhagavatam, we find examples of this. Maharaj Prikshit got the news, although <coughs> he had committed an offense to a king, he put a snake bird, a dead snake, not the bird, snake, on the, on the sage. And it was a minor offense, not major, but <coughs> The king's son took it as a major offense and cursed Maharaj Pichri to die within seven days by the bite of a snake bird. So Maharaj Pichri took that as the will of providence and Krishna's mercy and immediately gave up everything, his kingdom, his wife, his family, his riches, his animals, everything within his, his domain. He was ruling the whole world. Gave up everything and sat on the bank of the Ganges or Yamuna to wait for that time when the snake world will bite him. Also, <coughs> Bhar Maharaj became very advanced in his yoga practice. He left home, also gave up everything it says like when one goes to answers the call of nature and evacuates it, you will leave it and go away. And <clears throat> Maharaja Shabdev also, even while he was in his kingdom, became an Avadut, renounced everything. He didn't wear any clothes, didn't wash himself, didn't comb his hair, became totally he became a python man, like a python, completely dependent on Krishna, and he traveled all over the world that way, completely detached from anything in the material world. Then the eleventh canto, we have the Avanti Brahman, who was a greedy and terrible, angry man. But when his, he lost all his money, his family rejected him, he took sannyas. And then he traveled alone, and whatever happened to him, sometimes they would beat him, sometimes they would tie him up, sometimes they'd take his clothes, sometimes they'd pass urine on his prasadam, sometimes they call him bad names, sometimes they beat him, but he never protested. He said everything was the, coming by the will of Providence, the will of Krishna, he accepted everything. So he showed how to be totally renounced. And even the prostitute Pangala, also in the 11th canto, she one day didn't get any customers. And she finally realized that her uh, occupation as a prostitute was not what she should be doing. So she gave it up and surrendered to Krishna, surrendered her life. So these are some examples of surrender. Here it says a bird, a baby bird, depends on his mother and father for everything. This is there in all species, whether it be animals, cats, dogs, birds, beasts, except human beings. Or nowadays, they don't even want their children. They abort them before they're even born, or it's not uncommon 
to find babies in a garbage can. When they were throwing, when they were distributing books in the airports, they went to, they told Papa that the people are throwing our books away. We're selling books to, and Papa said that's not surprising, they're also throwing their babies away. And that comes in the newspaper. So often people, the garbage men, they collect the garbage, they find a skeleton of babies that have been rejected. So human society has become so degraded that they don't even want to, they have no love or any, any compassion for even their own children. They, they think they're a burden, they have sex, they want to have as much sex life as they want, but then they don't want to take responsibility. So they have abortion or they have, or they do something. And of course, there's a reaction comic reaction, a lot of people don't know about that. So, uh, the devotees know what is what should be done, what should not be done, and but the general mass of people do not know what should be done and what not to be done. So here, Prabhupada quotes his verse from <coughs> Srimad Bhagavatam 2.4.18 and these different sinful people the Kuratas are from the province of Old Bart the Hunas are from Germany and Russia the Andiras a province of South India Bulindas, the Greeks, Bulakshas, other provinces, Ambira, part of old Sindh, Sumbara, other province. <coughs> Yavanaha, the Turks, Gasha, Adaya, the Mongolian province. So, this was written by Srili Vyasadeva 5,000 years ago. And the modern scientists say that the modern civilization began 3,000 years ago. So how is it 2,000 years there was nothing? And or else they say there was the caveman and stone age and the dinosaurs. But we know from Srimad Bhagavatam there's four ages and there's always human beings and human civilization and on this planet and on all the other planets in the universe. So that is a speculation misconception. And Prabhupada wrote a purport and this verse is not only appropriate to this verse but it's appropriate to our present situation. So I'm going to read that purport. The above mentioned historical names of their different nations of the world, even those who are constantly engaged in sinful activities, are all corrigible to the standard of perfect human beings, or qualified, if they take shelter of the devotees of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ and Mohammed, two powerful to his Lord, have done a tremendous service on behalf of the Lord in the surface of the globe. And when the version of Sukadeva Goswami it appears, instead of running a godless civilization in the present context of the world situation, if the leadership of world affairs is entrusted to the devotees of the Lord, for which a worldwide organization under the name and style of International Society for Krishna Consciousness has already been started, then by the grace of the Almighty Lord, there can be a thorough change of heart in human beings all over the world because the devotees are able, authorities, to effect the change by purifying the dust worn minds of the people in general. Dust worn minds, that could mean dirty minds or uh, dull minds. The politicians of the world may remain in their respective positions because the devotees 
But Lord, I'm not interested in political leadership or diplomatic implications. The voice of interest is only seen that people in general are not misguided by political propaganda and seeing that the valuable life of human beings is not spoiled in a, in a follow, following a type of civilization that is ultimately doomed. The politician therefore would be guided by good counsel of devotees and certainly be a great change in the world situation by the purifying propaganda of the devotees as shown by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sukadev Goswami began his prayer by discussing the word Yad Kirtanam. So also Lord Chaitanya recommended that simply glorifying the Lord's holy name, a tremendous change of heart can take place by which the complete understanding between the human nations created by politicians can at once be extinguished. And after the extinction of the fire of misunderstanding, other prophets will follow. This destination, the des and the destination to go back home, back to God, as we have several times discussed in these pa pages. <clears throat> so this is what is required: a change in the consciousness of the world, misguided misunderstanding, misguided civilization, which is also mentally doomed. Well, even now, so many problems in the world, crises everywhere, but still they are warmongers. They're still talking, want to have a war. They're not satisfied that people are losing their jobs, people are losing their money, people are, can't get enough food, people can't get what they need. That's not satisfying enough. They want to have a war that will compl make complicate things ten times more. And create more havoc in the world. And create more bad karma. This all has come about, this whole crisis we're facing now, has come about by the karma, individual karma, the collective karma, the national karma, and the whole karma of the whole world because they've polluted the rivers, polluted the air, polluted, uh, killing 10 millions of cows and aborting their babies and so many other heinous acts have been going on for so many years. So it had to be a reaction. Prabhupada predicted that this would happen, that the modern civilization could not last perpetually it had to be uh, crumble at one point or another. So this is what uh, I want to say about this verse. Now we'll continue with the class. Here it says that Marjati, he has attained his destination by full surrender. Sarvadam Prichaja, Mame Kam Saranamraja, Ham Tuam Star, Pavmenu, Last line, Suchaha. Bhagavad Gita also says, Krishna says, those who surrender to me, uh, I free them from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Also says that. Maunam Jamanante, Garavam Pratante, Vasudeva Sarvamiti, Samahamadisadulaba. After many, many births, he was actually acknowledged me, surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is. Such a great soul is very rare. Samahamadisadulaba. Also, 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita talks about a banyan tree, which represents a perverted reflection, how the material world, the perverted reflection of the spiritual world. As its branches upward, its roots upward, branches down. One who knows this tree is the knower of the Vedas. In the third verse, third verse it says, no one can understand this tree, 
how it begins, how it ends, the worst foundation is, but one must cut this down with the weapon of detachment. So there are detachment is stressed again. And then it says, surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whom everything has begun, everything extended, since time immemorial. Then it says, those who are free from illusion, false prestige, false association, done with material lots, free from material desires, can surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, attain to the eternal kingdom. So several times, you see Gornitai, Krishna Bhava, and Raja Samson. Several times did he surrender as being stressed in Bhagavad Gita and throughout Prabhupada's teachings. And it took a little effort for devotees to surrender or join the Hare Krishna movement. Prabhupada said first they would hate us. First they'd laugh at us, then hate us, then they'd join us. So, it was a, hmm, quite a, uh, took a, a little bit of a, hmm, one had to have a little determination and a little conviction and faith that turning to Krishna, becoming a Krishna devotee, was the right thing to do in my life. And for most of us who come from the Western countries, there was protest from the mother, from the mother and father, from the family, from the friends. Even in India, one elderly gentleman in Delhi, he tried to become a devotee. His family members, his wife, his children, relatives said, you're crazy. You don't do what we're doing anymore. What's wrong with you? You don't eat meat, you don't gamble, you don't take take intoxication, you don't have sex anymore, what's wrong with you? Are you crazy? So that's what people think. If you don't do these things, you must be crazy. But for a devotee, uh, we welcome these things because it uh, turns around our consciousness to a pure life. Instead of living a life of debauchery, a life of sin, a life of misery. We can live a simple life. Krishna Kanta means simple living, high thinking and simple living. But the world today, everyone wants to high living and no, no thinking, no intelligence, dust covered mind. This is full surrender. And <coughs> Uh, the six items to surrender is accept everything favorable, reject everything unfavorable, to know that Krishna is your protector, that Krishna is your maintainer, that Krishna will bestow his mercy upon you, and that you feel oneself meek and humble. In this way, one can be a, a surrendered soul. So, uh, but uh, and the result is that by surrendering our lives to the spiritual master, to Krishna, then we will have a chance to uh, attain liberation, like King Yati. He attained liberation immediately. Also, King Katvanga was fighting with the demigods for a long time and he asked for a benediction. They give, he asked the benediction. They said, we'll give you a benediction. What benediction do you want? He said, tell me when I'm going to die. They said, you will die very immediately, within a few moments. So he took that opportunity to fully surrender his life, everything, he went in the temple and surrendered to Krishna, went back to Godhead. So surrendering can take immediately or may take many, many lifetimes. Depends on the individuals. It's called, there's sadhana siddha, there's uh, uh, nitya siddha, and there's kripa siddha. 
So I'm the center of those who go through devotional service, practice rules and regulations, and hope to try to come to a higher level of surrender. There's the Kripa creep, Siddha, Nitya Siddha devotees, those who come from the spiritual world are always liberated, come to assist Krishna in his pastimes. And then there's Kripa Siddha. We see the example of Jagai Marai. Jagai Marai were debauchees. They were all they were born in Brahmin families. They turned into debauchees and they were so sinful. When Yamaraj asked the scribes to write down all the sins, he had a thousand scribes, write down all the sins of Jagai Marai. After one, one month of trying to do that, their hands got exhausted. They said, we can't do this, this impossible task. So, there wasn't a sin that Jagai Mata hadn't committed. They would plunder, burn people's houses, rape women, kill cows, do whatever they liked, and always they evaded the law somehow. But one thing they never did was commit Vaishnava Parad. So therefore, Lord Nityananda took compassion upon them, even though they were sinful, even though they struck them in the head and caused blood to come from Lord Nityananda's head. Lord Nityananda still delivered them. So this is an example of Kripa Siddha. So they went from debauchees of the worst time, worst kind, people feared them. When they saw Jagai and Mara, they'd run away. You know, if they, even if the shadow touched people, they'd go and take bath in the Ganga. But as soon as they were got delivered by Lord Nichanan and Lord Chaitanya, they gave up their sinful ways and started chanting two lakhs of japa, of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, every day. So this is Kripa Siddha. If one may want to, sometimes they give an honorary degree in the colleges to some person who has achieved something, wrote many books, did some uh, remarkable thing. So they give an honorary degree to a person without having to go to school to get it. But most stu students have to go to school for four years or so to get their degree. You can't sit at home and think, well, they're gonna give me an honorary degree. So in the same way, we have to practice our <coughs> Krishna consciousness, uh, we have to follow all the rules and regulations, uh, Vaidhi Bhakti, until we uh, can come to uh, uh, try to get the mercy of the Lord. Here it says that King Yati uh, got the mercy of the Lord by pleasing the Lord. Isha Prasada, Bhagavad Prasada, if you please the spiritual master and Krishna's please, if Krishna's please, the spiritual master's please. Well, we have to work in that way. So Prabhupada quoted this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam to point out the fact that it's Janma Karma. It's not Janma Karma. It's in Bhagavad Gita, it says Guna Karma, Yagasha, Tatravaram, Mahasrishtam, Guna Karma, Yagasha. This is one of Prabhupada's <coughs> main, uh, main discussions, many, where, many places in his books. He defeats this argument that birth is more important than quality. Especially when he made, he went to the western countries and converted uh, Yavanas, Malachyas into Brahmins, Vaishnavs, and Sannyasis. He got criticized by many people, local people, even in Vrindavan, even today. They criticize this movement, say we're not bona fide. But it's not by birth, it's by quality. You may be born, someone may be born in the family of a high court judge. He doesn't become a high court judge automatically. He has to get the qualification. 
So one may be born in a Brahmin family, but if he doesn't have the qualities of Brahmin, he's not considered a Brahmin or a Vaishnav. So Prabhupada wouldn't have gone to America. His spiritual matter ordered him to go to America, preach in the English-speaking language, and make devotees, make people into Vaishnavs, not Brahmins. Of course, Brahmins, he gave Brahman initiation with the hope that people would become qualified Brahmins. And Prabhupada wouldn't have done something which was detrimental to his reputation, which was uh, not proper. If he thought he was committing an offense and uh, doing something improper, he wouldn't have done it. Prabhupada didn't go to America like other gurus to get many followers, to get name and fame. He didn't have 14 sannyas, women sannyasis. He didn't have 18 Rolls Royces. He didn't have, he didn't do what other gurus, so-called bogus gurus did. He simply came to America. They asked Prabhupada, why have you come to this country? There's so many religions already. Prabhupada said, I simply came here to teach people how to love God. So this is Prabhupada's mission to spread the Krishna conscious movement regardless of uh, birth, quality, creed, nation, quality, creed, whatever, whatever uh, one comes from. He can become a devotee. Is he not a very good argument? Even learned people in this country, around the world, criticize Prabhupada for doing that, for making uh, Western people into Vaishnavas and Brahmanas. But he didn't do it whimsically. He said, first of all, you have to follow four principles. No meeting, no gambling, no illicit sex, no intoxication. Other societies, they don't tell their members that. So, Prabhupada didn't want cheap followers. Other gurus have millions of followers, but he doesn't tell them they have to follow the four regulated principles. So Prabhupada could have had millions of followers, but he didn't want cheap, he wanted quality, not quantity. But people don't know that. But I gave one man a book, a small book. He read that four regulated principles, and he said, this is very nice, I like this. So people all over the world need to be educated. There's so many schools, universities, giving people education. There's no education about the soul, no education about how people should live a, a human form of life. Otherwise, it's cat and dog civilization. Simply having sex life, simply eating and sleeping. No thinking, no nothing about self-realization. People are not interested in yoga, meditation, self-realization. They only think that to get money and have sense gratification, have sex life is the goal of life. So here, uh, <coughs> we're talking about King Yati surrendering immediately. Immediately, immediately. Four times Prabhupada said that, immediately. So he said that we must be sincere. It says King, King Yati attained the loyam, greed. When we're practicing uh, bhakti yoga, we can go through the stages. First faith, then association, bhajana kriya, initiation, nartana vritti, you give up our sinful activities, then nista, faith, ruchi, firm faith, asakti, and bhava. So from asakti, from uh, attachment to Krishna, when we're free from all material contamination, then one can develop loyam, that greed, to uh, become Krishna conscious, to uh, being greedy to get the mercy of Krishna's lotus feet. So, read, Lord Chaitanya came, Chaito Dharpana Marjanam, came to purify our hearts. King Yati purified his heart, became free from all material contamination. Attain Sarup City, attain the perfection of life by understanding his identity. So that is what we are striving for. <coughs> we cleanse our heart of all the dirt that has been accumulated there 
for years together. Nadajana Jana Sundarim, Kabichava Ji Isre, Mama Jamani Jamani Isre, Bhagavati Aitiki Twai. Lord Chitani said, I don't want wealth, I don't want women, I don't want any number of followers. All of my years, devotional service, birth after birth. So this is a mood of devotee, detachment. <coughs> you want, and also it says here, you must be sincere and serious. Also, Lord Kapila Dave, third canto, 25th chapter, text number five, he said we should be sincere and serious. He said we should be serious about devotional service. So they asked Prabhupada, how do we become sincere and serious? Prabhupada said, just by being serious. You can become serious by being serious. So our, we can all examine ourselves. Are we serious? Or have we taken Krishna consciousness seriously? Or are we just uh, practicing artificially, going through the rules and regulations, haphazardly, not attentive in our japa? Especially, this is the most important item, japa. Are you sleeping during japa? How many people are not sleeping during japa? Anybody raise your hand? So, the whole idea of chanting to invoke the mercy of Krishna, we're asking Krishna, please engage me in your service. It's a prayer. We're praying for the mercy of the Lord. Of course, uh, <coughs> we can't expect to become Krishna conscious immediately. I was king for King Hayati. Took him. He didn't. Uh, first, he enjoyed. He had married uh, Devianti, and enjoyed with her. And he broke the uh, promise of Sukacharya. Prabhu Sukacharya told him. Never sleep with the friend Sunista, and he didn't hear. He did that, so Sukhjaya cursed him to become old and indolent. But he didn't welcome that. So Sukhjaya told him, "You can exchange your old age with someone's youth." So he had three sons. Two sons did not agree, but Puru, his youngest son, did agree. So he got his youth back. He enjoyed it for many, many years. But finally, here it says, he woke up and realized that there was no value having sense gratification, having sex life, even for many, many years. <clears throat> So he gave it up entirely in a moment. So uh, <clears throat> it took him some time to come to that realization. And Prabhupada says there's no happiness in family life. And in family life is very troublesome for someone to make advancement. In family life is very difficult or next to, very slow or next to nil. So giving up attachments, giving up family life, giving up these things, it's not an easy thing. But if one gets the uh, mercy of the guru, mercy of Krishna, one can be, it can be done. But <coughs> we should understand that uh, the why wait? Why are we waiting to be fully surrendered? Why are we waiting to uh, be completely renounced? And 
what's holding us back to get free from the bondage of conditioned life where mainly it's because of offenses there's Nama Parad, Seva Parad, Vaishnava Parad, Jiva Parad, and Dhamma Parad. So in the matter of chanting, Lord Chaitanya instructed Rupa Goswami about the <coughs> uh, pitfalls in chanting the holy name and performing devotional service. He compared it to Guru Krishna Prasadi by Bhakti Lata Beach. So the seed, when the time of initiation, the Guru gives the seed is sown in the heart, the Bhakti Lata Beach of devotional service. So that seed begins to grow. And when you have a creeper, tiny creeper, you have to fence it in. Otherwise, the monkeys will get it, or an elephant will step on it. So you have to fence it in by following the rules and regulations associated with devotees. Then as in the seed grows, the creeper grows, you have to water it. Especially this time of year, it's hot and dry. If you don't water the creeper, it will dry up and die. So the watering process is <coughs> Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam. Does he hearing, hearing and chanting? When Lord Chaitanya went over, over South India, he stressed this fact that chanting, hearing and chanting, two most important items, nine items of devotional service. So you have to water the creeper. But along with the creeper grows weeds in the form of an arthas. And he says that the arthas are innumerable on the heart, offenses, anarthas, unwanted things, profiteering, duplicity, cheating, so many things, cruelty to other living entities. These things are in our heart, and they, uh, Queen Kunti is asking that the mud, uh, the dirt in the heart, be cleansed away, the dirt, the filth that has been in our heart since time immemorial. Especially for Western people, we were brought up with the, uh, from the moment, from time we were born, our parents fed us abominable things. We had to eat abominable things. We had to see abominable things. We had to hear abominable things. So our heart became more and more dirty. So it's like cleaning coal. We try to clean our heart. But it's a effort. We have to make the effort by chanting, by hearing and chanting. We should try to hear attentively. Lord Rashab, Lord Kapila Dave said we should hear for a long, long time about the name, form, quality, pastimes of the Lord. And this hearing, Shravanam Kirtanam, hearing and chanting, this is the process. When Lord Titania asked the top of bodies in South India how to attain perfection, they said it was by following the Banashram Dharma. The Lord Stanley rejected that and said, no, the best process in this age, Harinam, 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 and we came below, Kaluna, Stavina, 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 Gatiranta, Anyata, by hearing and chanting. This is the best process in this age. Also, Ramananda Roy was asked how to attain, what was the highest perfection, and he quoted many verses, starting off with Vanashram Dharma, and Lord Stanley also rejected that as being external. And so Raman Rai quoted some verses from Bhagavad Gita and Lord Chaitanya also rejected that and said speak further. So the highest perfection is attain the loving service that's shown by the gopis of Vrindavan. This uh, Vipa Lamba Bhav, this uh, feelings of love and exchange between Krishna and the gopis by all the residents of Vrindavan. Well, we can't artificially enter into that. Well, we can, we should be sincere and serious about our practice in Krishna consciousness and hear about these things. Hear constantly. Now, we have so much free time. We should not waste our time 
as playing with the cell phone, looking at this and that. We should minimize our time on unwanted things and utilize our time for hearing and chanting and remembering Krishna's name, form, quality, and pastimes. In this way, uh, our spiritual advancement will develop. So Gaur Govindamara said, we're opening a crying school. So we have to cry for Krishna to please uh, let us engage us in your service and not be distracted by anything else. If you can't cry for Krishna, then we can cry that we can because we can cry for Krishna. But it must be there. Haridas the course said, even if you chant sixty four rounds, if you don't show the exact symptoms, then you're still materially contaminated. Krishna Nama Chintamani Krishna Shaitanya Rasa Vigraha. Krishna and Krishna's name are non different. So Krishna is there in everyone's heart. Krishna is dancing on our tongue when we're chanting. So if the ecstatic symptoms are not there, it means we're ch chanting is offensive. There's uh, offensive chanting, then there's Nama Bas and there's Shuddha Nam. So we should at least come to the Nama Bas stage, the clearing stage, and start feeling ecstatic symptoms when we're chanting. If we're not feeling ecstatic symptoms when we're chanting, and we know we're still uh, contaminated by, we're still committing offenses to the holy name, especially the tenth offense, to consider I, me, mine, and to be inattentive. So we should, Satchananda Swami wrote a wonderful book, and it's called The Living Name. He gives some uh, instructions how we should chant japa, how we can improve on our japa, how we can uh, come to this understanding that Japa and Krishna and enter into a relationship with Krishna Sambandhan, Abhideya, Parojana. How we can develop a relationship with Krishna, attain how, how we can uh, uh, <coughs> serve Krishna, so understand that we, we are Javera, Srubhoi, Nitya, Krishna Das, eternal servants of Krishna, and that we uh, how we can uh, practice devotional service and how we can attain complete perfection, which is Prema Bhakti. So today is the appearance day of Vrindavan Das Thakur. So I'll read the, something about him. In her childhood, Vrindavan Das Thakur, in her childhood in the Raini Navy, niece of Srivast Pandi, became mad with love of God upon receiving the mercy of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. Later she gave birth to Rindavan Das, who was the, la the last disciple of Sri Nityananda Prabhu. On his guru's order, he wrote Chaitanya Bhagavat. <coughs> it's particularly a law among Vaishnava writers like Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Krishna Skaviraj, and Rindavan Das Thakur to always keep themselves in the background. They never mention anything about their family lineage, lineage or personal history. The author of the best written and most relevant verses collected in Rupa Goswami's Pajavali remain unknown. During the 16th century, the entire book of ex exceptional transcendental prose and poetry were penned by prideless Vaishnavs preferred to reign Anonymous. Feeling the utmost humility, such Vaishnava writers express themselves only in relationship to their preceptors. Sri Krishna Kaviraj showed his supreme homage and gratitude by honoring Vrindavan Das Thakur with an appellation, Vyas, called him the Yas of the Chaitanya Charitamrita and Chaitanya Charitamrita. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, Vrindavan Das Thakur is Lord Nityananda's favorite devotee. Therefore, he's the original 
Vyasadeva in describing the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna's pastimes in Bhagavatam and other Puranas, Sri Vindavan Das's core described Chaitanya Lila in Chaitanya Bhagavad. I read that again. As told by Sri Vyasadeva, as Sri Vyasadeva told Krishna's pastimes in Bhagavatam and other Puranas, Sri Vyandavan Das's core described Chaitanya Lila in Chaitanya Bhagavad. The humble heart of Krishna Das Kaviraj pours out more praises of Vrindavan Das Thakur. Hearing Chaitanya Bhagavad destroys all misfortune. Receiving Chaitanya Bhagavad, one will understand the glories of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda and obtain the highest perfection of knowledge, pure love of Krishna. Since such a wonderful book could not be written by a human being, it seems that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has himself spoken it through the mouth of Sri Vrindavan Das Thakur. Offer millions of respectful obeisances to Lotus Feet of Vrindavan Das Thakur. By compiling such a valuable book, he has delivered everyone from the cycle of birth and death. This is found in Chaitanya Charitamrita Hari Lila, chapter 8, verse 33 to 42. Among at Mama Gachi in no, Murudrip, Navadrip, Vrindavan Das Thakur established the deities of Gornitai and Sri Jagannath Dev. He lived there as a celibate and worshipped his beloved deities. Vrindavan Das Thakur had many disciples, including Gopinath Bhattacharya, a descendant of Sri Keshava Bharti. In Krishna's pastimes, Vrindavan Das Thakur is Sri Vyasadev. His samadhi is in the 64 samadhi areas. Vrindavan Das Thakur is Sri Vyasadev in Krishna's pastimes. Vrindavan Das Thakur ki. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. So our time is up. Anybody have any comments or questions? Did I make any mistakes? You can say it. If you're hungry, you now it's time for Prashadam. Anybody have any comments, questions? All right. Shri Bhagavatam ki. Shri Prabhupada ki. Gaur Pramanandi.